Before I begin, judging by the stats, people seem to like this series, so without further ado, here's the difference between Diamond and Master. For reference, there'll be 5 tips instead of 6. The first, and arguably most important tip when trying to reach Masters from Diamond, is simply choosing just one teammate to work with in your game. And the best part is, is that you don't even have to talk about it, as Shane explains here. Here's like the 9 BILLION IQ to get out of Diamond. In Diamond, you pick one person on your team. It's either gonna be the carry, or the person who think you think needs the help, and instead of trying to invent some new goal for you to accomplish, help the person on your team accomplish whatever they're trying to accomplish. You don't even have to talk about it. Like, have you looked at your Winston once? Just chill with Winston, poke, and when, when, when your Winston attempts to feed, conveniently assist him in killing him, whatever was going to accomplish his goal of feeding like a moron. Like, if he gets hooked, reflect. Suddenly the Roadhog's also dead. Like, dead. Pick one! You don't even have to play a six, just pick one! This is ever more important when playing in a dive composition, with so many working parts in the team comp, from your backline supports, to your tanks actually diving, to the DPS taking well-timed angles when the core goes in. The second tip, being more tailored towards DPS players, is to not force disadvantageous duels, and to force advantageous duels wherever possible. I'll break down disadvantageous and advantageous duels into three major factors. The status of your cooldowns, the amount of HP you have, and the sightlines your hero wants to play. For instance, if you're playing Soldier, even if you have full HP and cooldowns, you don't want to be corner peeking against a Widowmaker from 20 miles away. Likewise, playing really close and upfront angles as a sniper up against a hero like Genji or Tracer isn't gonna end well for you. Building on this a bit further, when taking hitscan duels, in particular, sniper duels, his IO stocks going through a number of advantages that you should take and utilize wherever possible when taking a duel yourself. You never want to take a fair fight, right? You always want to have an advantage when you go for a 1v1. For example, you get the jump on someone, right? You get the first shot without them noticing you. The advantage could be positional. So for example, if you have high ground, that's a positional advantage. You can you have your ultimate, that's an advantage. You can have someone pocketing you, that's an advantage, right? There's also peeker's advantage, because obviously you know when you peek, but the enemy doesn't know when you peek, which means that you're gonna have an advantage in terms of reaction time. So if we look at this 1v1, there's two outcomes. Either you use your ultimate here, and the enemy Widowmaker doesn't hide, in which case you can peek her and kill her because you have a very, very big advantage. You have peeker's advantage, you have high ground advantage, and you have wall hack advantage. Or she doesn't peek you, which means that for the entire duration of your ultimate, the enemy Widowmaker and the enemy Ash are going to be completely useless. The third tip, being more tailored towards main tank players, especially those who play Reinhardt, is to clear high ground before pushing in, as Spalo explains here. Where is the enemy team really scary? Right here. This is scary. This is really scary. Because the second that you press W down main, what's going to happen? Where's your shield for Junkrat spam? Who's going to stop Doomfist from just going in and smashing your f support's faces in? You're done. You're done. You're going to W key, and you're going to be like, why am I not getting any healing? Well, it's either because your backline is dead, or they had heal station, flashbang, on an aid, nobody's shooting the enemy Reinhardt, they're all shooting you, bingo. So the question here is, what can you as Reinhardt do? Now this is why Reinhardt's a tricky hero to play. He's really, really fundamentally basic, but he's hard to master because you look at the situation here and you're like, okay, well, I have to find out a way to deal with that. You need to clear stairs. Now, obviously clearing stairs into a junk is gonna feel pretty clunky. You might get punched, it's gonna feel rough. But I'm less scared because if you go stairs, the enemy Sigma, enemy Ana, enemy Mercy, enemy Rhine, they can't really pincer you. Once you clear high ground, chat, what can Reinhardt do with high ground? Can Reinhardt really do anything with high ground? No, he can't, no, he can't. But your McCree can, your soldier can, and more importantly, this isn't just about enabling your team, it's about in disabling them. If you do nothing else here but make Doomfist reset his cooldowns and make Junkrat go play with his team, you've done a good job. I'll showcase three more examples on Dorado attack, one for each point. Keep in mind that you should ideally do this as a six-man team, especially in a full Lucio bat ball comp, but in ranked, having one or two teammates, such as a Lucio and or a DPS player, should be enough. On first point, you go coast to clear this high ground to get rid of the squishy DPS players. On second point attack, you again go coast side, up the stairs, to control the high ground on bridge. Yes, this is a bit unorthodox, and I have had teammates yell at me in rank for doing this, but if you just stay on cart as Ryan, you're way more likely to get surrounded by angles, and by clearing this high ground, you're allowing your own DPS to use the high ground you just cleared, as Spalo explained. On third point attack, you want to path up the right side stairs to again clear any DPS or squishy heroes. It's not too uncommon to encounter a pog to DPS, or flex support using these high grounds. Here's yet another example that I provide in my Watchpoint Gibraltar guide, which I highly, highly recommend 
that you check out. Clearing high ground is as simple as it sounds. You path the high ground and try and fight in short starting line in close spaces as shown here. One small thing to add for backline heroes such as Baptiste or McCree, especially against dive comps, would be to try and always have a defensive rotational option available, for instance, kiting off high ground. With Brawl and Attack, Again, it's either you clear high ground or tunnel underneath. With clearing high ground, there's really only one route as shown on the screen. Make sure that when your team are rotating in open space, you'll Diva DMs and you rotate as 6. With Brawl and Attack, you'll likely have to do both clearing high ground and tunneling in enclosed spaces, as some poll shows here. Again, we do our little rotation across, and we go, we're pushing cart a little from behind here after we've recharged resources, and then we go into here. And then we push back out to cart, push cart more, and then we go here, and then they don't know, are we coming out here to push cart more, or are we going upstairs to clear them as a group. The fourth tip is to have aggressive rotational options when you position. This is useful for moving to more aggressive positions during the mid-fight, in order to get another angle to use your cooldowns. In fact, here's Jane showcasing a good example of a master Zemplier aggressively rotating to a left side flank on Rialto first point attack. Left flank. Yeah, yeah. yeah good, you got it. Is that really that hard? Soft flank, left side, found an opportunity, unscouted, surprise of the Hanzo, had a right click charge, boom. Now, you can either look for a follow up, try and deny the res, or just fuck off. Huge. Right? Playmaker. 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 You need to do that shit consistently. You want to get to the point where the opponent is fearful of what window, doorway, crevice, just fucking attic. Your robot ass is gonna float out of and just delete somebody with a right click. You wanna get to the point where you are not being hunted, you are the hunter. You wanna threaten that, you wanna cause people's attention to be drawn off the front line, you want them to invest resources into trying to try and keep track of you. You want them to take different positioning because they keep just getting fucked by you. That was good. I want to see more of that. Here's another example on Rialto third point attack, where you can rotate to either of the left side or right side rooms. And what often happens is that teams who cap Rialto third point often control these areas of the map. Just to add a bit more nuance, heroes that want to play shorter sight lines, for instance, Junkrat or Reaper, or any hero for that matter of fact, if you're playing up against a longer range composition, would want to take the right side flank due to the smaller sight lines that the room provides. In contrast, if you're playing Ash with a pocket, rotating left side would be ideal due to the slightly longer sight lines that this angle provides you. Again, referring back to that concept of maximizing the advantages you take in every duel. The last tip, and whilst it's quite simple, it still happens to this day, and that's just panic ulting. I'm sure that we've all seen that Diamond Zara who tosses in her grav just before she dies, grabbing the entire enemy team, and then proceeding to complain that nobody died, even though there was no follow up at all. Obviously, the key to this is some level of planning and timing. Using grav mid fight whilst the enemy team has strained some cooldowns, and maybe even an ultimate or two, whilst your team is able to aggressively follow up would be a great use of your grav. Well that's the video, thanks for watching and if you enjoyed don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. And if this video helped to raise your IQ, be sure to share it with your friends to also raise theirs. Until next time.